Welcome back everyone, Jose Turn One Crisis here with another Grand Prix World video. Now, clearly, obviously, this cannot be a Grand Prix World video. It's not 2001. Clearly, Grand Prix World isn't open. Why is this a Grand Prix World video? Well, as it happens, we made it to 100 subscribers a while ago, and one of the personal goals that I had is that I was going to make two series both for F1 Challenge 9902 and for Grand Prix World. Uh, well, not exactly a series for Grand Prix World, but something important. That important for Grand Prix World is first describing what exactly you need to do to access telemetry, because every so often I get asked, what do I do to get access to telemetry? And let me show you right now how I do it. Um, we're in the main folder of Grand Prix World 2023 by Mini, and well, this is very normal, like nothing weird here. But the thing is, to access telemetry, there is something missing. A folder's missing. We need to get that. How do we get that folder? We make a new folder. We call it that. D-A-T, that. And we open that folder. Now, now with the that folder, what are we supposed to do? How do we get telemetry, you ask me? And the way to do that is, by using one of two files. You can actually use both files, but I prefer to use just one of them. The first file is called, we make a new text file, delete everything, and you call it dump dot that. Accept, and there we go. What does dump dot that do? That tells the game, hey, everyone, someone does a lap during the race, I want you to generate telemetry for that person. And it will generate a text file with telemetry from that car, which is that stuff like um, component wear, speed, uh, tire wear, all that kind of stuff, which is a bit hard to check during the race. It is a text file, and every time someone does a lap, it will lag up the game because, well, it's generating telemetry. I don't tend to use this one much. I do use it when I want to see some weird AI behaviors, but I generally don't use it. What is the one that you use then? Instead of dump aid, I create another one called dump aid dot uh, dump aid q dot that. It basically does the same thing, but instead of generating telemetry during the race, it generates it during qualifying, and it's exactly where I want it because during qualifying, I can I can use it as a makeshift practice session and in that makeshift practice session i can just get how much where we have on the softs and on the heart and so on and so forth so i only gonna keep the q one because that's the one that's gonna generate telemetry for qualifying which is the one i'm interested in there's another dot that file that's interesting and important and that one is called on limit dot that what does on limit do it removes any frame limiter, so the only frame limitations will come from uh, any kind of software you have that limits frames. So with this, you will have the game running at like 100, 200, 300 FPS, depending on how powerful your computer is. It's pretty fun to do that. The game runs extremely fast and races go by pretty quickly. It does produce some weirdness in terms of the AI or, well, the AI behavior on track, I haven't tested it much. As far as I've seen, it is easier to overtake people when the FPS is high, but, you know, things and stuff. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep these two because it's going to make everything easier. Okay, you ask. You generate telemetry. What the heck do you do to the telemetry? How do you use it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the way I use it is thanks to a spreadsheet I make. Yeah, I make, I made. English is hard. It's thanks to a spreadsheet I made. Also, a uh, shout out to uh, B Dub, who is the creator of or uh, GPW Edit uh, 1.0 and 1.1, and is the one that ended up figuring out uh, the stats that I'm using here. But I make these shout outs before I go into my dramatic introduction to the thing I'm doing. Um, I will probably put a link to his GitHub down there, as well as the link to the thing that I'm going to show in a moment. So yeah, link to uh, uh, VDOP's GitHub about Grand Prix World is down in the description. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, how to use this telemetry? Well, I have made a spreadsheet because spreadsheets are awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the Grand Prix World Manager's spreadsheet. It even has a name on top of it. I named it that way. What do I do with this? First of all, I generate uh, driver orders for races and I get uh, percentages that tells me how much personnel I need to put into a certain event to be able to get success on it. It is, it is the way I manage this game and I will explain to you how to use it. First of all, you need to load the game. How do you load the game? Well, you open the game, open a save file, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So here we are in Grand Prix World 2023. So um, again, say, what exactly do you do? First things first, to make this thing work correctly, you go into your team staff page and fill out the personnel that you have. So in this case, you have uh, in this case, Red Bull has in the commercial department, Prosser with ability five, uh, 10, 14, 14, 12, 15 in quality of personnel. You fill that in the spreadsheet. You also have to fill out the number of stars. You basically in the spreadsheet, deploy exactly what you have here and exactly what you have here. And you put the exact, the blah, 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 English is hard, the exact amount of effort that your guys are putting. In this case, commercial has 109%, design has 119%, engineering has 100 and mechanics has 109%. So that's the first thing that you do. Go here, uh, maybe take photos or something, and you fill everything out. Here's how it looks when everything is filled out. So, um, what can you do here? The first things that you can do is the commercial calculator. Uh, commercial is not big enough for me to consider put it somewhere else. So I decided to put the commercial calculator here. So what's the commercial calculator? It tells you exactly how much personnel you need to put in order to progress something. For, for example, if I wanted to negotiate with a level five cash sponsor, I will need to put 5% uh, commercial uh, personnel into said sponsor to open negotiations. Now, careful, because if you want to talk with a new sponsor, you need to put at times one or 2% more. This is more noticeable when you have uh, a poor team that wants to talk with new sponsors. You at times need to put a bit more percent. So be careful with what this gives you. Always put like, one or two percent more uh, negotiations the percentage here is how much personnel you need to move negotiations one block uh, licensing is how much you need to on uh, what i can't remember the hospital uh, the licensing term but um whatever when you have three blocks on the desirability support whatever it is the term the license you use this amount of personnel will move you one block forward. And hospitality, this one at times works. Um, some seasons it doesn't quite work, but whatever. This is how much personnel you need to put to increase hospitality level by one, other than level one, which is at like just 1%. But in any case, um, at times in some seasons, the hospitality level requirement increases and a lot of times goes down to this level I have set up here. I do not know why, it's just something that happens. Um, I am unsure why it happens, but it happens. What else can you do here? What else can I do? Well, you can calculate contracts that the personnel you're wanting to talk to, 90% of the time will accept. At times they don't because of reasons, but yeah. So how do you do this? First, you put your current world championship position constructors be advised in this case it is a one because uh, red bull will be leading the constructors in this scenario that will affect many things like for example how much championship bonus they want so you put the managers uh, like skill rating that you want to target and you put the current salary and in the case of the commercial you want uh, you put the royalty percent it's actually six here i actually had to rewrite this for the people red bull has say i want to resign everyone so put their salary and it will spit out how much person minimum personnel they want how much revenue they would prefer that your team has 
and the new salary they want, as well as any in bonus increase or royalty increase that they could desire. You can do the same thing for drivers. You input here the speed and experience they have, their current salary, the championship bonus, and the race bonus, and it will spit out uh, how much revenue they want, how much the new salary is going to be, and how much championship or race bonuses they want. Uh, be advised that when they reach 10 million, this calculation doesn't quite work because according to what I've read, they actually start wanting less money when they are at 10 million and they want to rise. Same thing with 20, but I'm pretty sure Verstappen will want getting 28 million. So uh, the, he will accept this, but this will work uh, mostly with Perez who has 8 million salary, I can give him 11 million, he's probably going to accept that. Same with Lawson, he has a salary of 1.9 million, I could probably resign him for 2 million and a bit, and of course, the bonuses. So let's try that, I will correctly input this stuff here, and I will offer the exact same contracts that are posted here. So, let me pause the recording, and, you know, input the correct data, and then try to give them said contracts. Right, first one will be Prosser, who would want a salary of around 812,000 and a royalty of around a nine. Uh, and as you can see, I offered him a contract of 830 and royalty of 9%, seasons just one, because um, let me just reload to so show you that it mostly works reliably. You can offer a bit less, like 800,000 and a bit less, and they will generally accept. But, uh, you know, not quite recommended because then you will have to go another time. So 9 and 8.30 seasons. Um, level 5s don't want a lot of seasons. They just want 1. At times they will accept 2. At times they will accept 3. But, well, just don't, don't really test your luck. As you can see, he actually likes the salary and the royalty. He doesn't like the season. So if I just wanted to offer, say, 1 year and 800 30,000 and 9% it will accept pretty much every single time but if I wanted to offer just a tiny bit more like if I wanted to offer no I misordered dang it if I want to offer just 800,000 and 8% he might be a bit upset but other times he accepts so they aren't hard rules that you have to follow it's just recommended that you offer the same or maybe a bit higher but now in this case um, at times they want uh, at times people will accept a bit less money because you're resigning them. But what if I wanted to go for Penesi, who is from Ferrari, it's a different team and therefore will want a bit more cash. So let's run those calculations. She would like 761, I can offer 765 and 8%. So I can offer that. As you can see, she accepts the deal, which is pretty good. Can this happen consistently? Only one way to find out. And let me be honest, I myself have not tested if it is 100% consistent, it appears to be. So it looks like level five personnel actually want an increase in royalty of uh, 3%, maybe at times 2%, and she take 2%? No, in this case, no. You can get away with it if you're trying to resign one of your own people, but not if it is like someone new. Maybe I can get away with a bit less money? I can, so don't take it as a hard and fast rule that you have to offer exactly as much as they want. Maybe you can take a click less. The only risk is that they might not like it and not accept right away. Um, so yeah, that is consistent. Let's go with new. How much does new we want? So, Adrian new wants 2.8 million, I can offer that. 37,000, I can offer him a 40, and 750 in championship bonus, I can offer him exactly that. He accepts. We can rerun that, just so you can see that it does work. 2.8 million, 40,000, because he wants 35, uh, 37,000, I want to offer him a bit more. I want to give him two years, because he's going to be upset about the number of years, yeah. You can see, this works relatively consistently, you can offer the deals that the calculator gives you, and the people will resign. Uh, just be careful that the deals can get pretty big. And like I mentioned, um, we're gonna do it with drivers. I do not remember how much Verstappen wants, so let me just check that in a moment. 
Right, so we step in. Let's go down to Red Bull. Down to Red Bull. Just Red Bull. Just Red Bull. Wants 28 million. Um, sure. Offering three years. 8 million in championship bonus and 375? Let's offer him 390. Contract is too short, so yeah, he wants a longer contract. That's something that happens. That's something that I cannot control. Whenever I uh, like keep them for, how do I put this? Whenever they want to sign due to seasons, but everything else, it should be consistent. Now, since he wants 20 million, I'm pretty sure I could get him for a bit less in terms of uh, the salary. You see, contract is now too long. He's indecisive. But I am unsure how little I can actually increase the salary offer. Let's check it out. So let's see. Again, just 8 million, 3, uh, four, uh, 390, just 25,000, uh, but offer a three year deal. He doesn't like it for some team condition, but uh, random team condition, that can happen. But salary, he does want it. So uh, when they get to 10,000, 20 million. Uh, uh, 10 million, 20 million, don't completely trust the calculator, you can get away with offering maybe half of what they want, so he wanted 28 million and just gonna offer him 24 million maybe, maybe he will accept maybe he won't, I don't know this is something that I honestly have not tested contract is too long, okay, so as you can see it is reliably consistent with 10 million, 20 million, you can offer a bit less, but when it comes to offering contracts it is pretty good. So that's one of the things you can do with the calculator. The other thing you can absolutely do is set up your hospitality that way. So as you can see, 10% in quality gives us a level two. The reason for that is that, of course, let me take off all of the percentages here. 1% gives us level one. 10% gives us level two because one plus 9%. Then we go all the way to 19, level 3. And it will happen so on, you add more 9s, and then you get all the way to level 5. In this case, I'm going to keep it at 10, and then at 5, and then at 5. The calculator also told us that to get, say, a level 5 sponsor, you want to put, at least to start negotiations, you want to put 5%. So I put 5%. I recommend that you put 6, maybe 7% if you're unsure. Engine. Um... We want to go for the Honda. It's only a level 4 here, so we can put 4, because the calculator says so. Ford, who is a level 5, and yes, this is a modified version of the 2023 mod that allows me to see all of the engine sponsors. Um, I want to talk to Ford, who is a level 5 in cash, I put 5%. Tire, Pirelli is a level 5, 5%. Uh, fuel, 5%, 5%. 4% because it's a level 4 in cash. The only important thing to actually talk to, Nico, uh, to, to sponsors is the cash rating, not the R&D rating. Never mind about the R&D rating. So as you can see, cash sponsors is a bunch of fives, 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 and you have some fours here because that's what the calculator tells me. And it will reliably start negotiations most of the time. Again, I'd recommend that you put an extra percentage point or two if you're unsure or if you're, if you're a poor team trying to talk with new sponsors because the calculator isn't perfect. Okay, for completion's uh, sake, I just offered the contract to all of the people we had. I'm trying to resign them. Uh, some of them didn't accept because I wanted to give them like three-year deals. And uh, Liam Lawson specifically, or, uh, or number three driver, test driver, I offered him 280 in race bonus and he didn't accept them. That's because this is... Um, always be aware of the way this is because... <laughs> Uh, this is flipped. Uh, I don't know why I wrote it this way, but it should have been this. Okay, that explains why he didn't accept uh, the offer. I should have offered in 360. Um, okay, never mind. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is the stuff you can do with just this sheet, the department performance sheet. You may be wondering, okay, anything else I can do? Obviously, here is the testing sheet. What can you do with the testing sheet? Well, you can determine a, a testing program that will give you exactly as much uh, development testing, like overall testing, <clears throat> for you to have success and for you to be able to repair all of the cars that you have at your disposal. So how do we use it? First of all, 
You fill this up with the skill and experience of your three drivers. So your number one, your number two, and your test driver. If you for some reason don't have your test driver, you just zero this out and his contributions will not be marked anyway. So how do you use it? Over to the left, you have how much mechanics you're starting. The first thing you need to do is to repair, <clears throat> repair any damage the car has. Where is not important, but damage is. So you put how many mechanics you're starting with. In this case, I'm starting with 100%. Then you have the total test miles that you want to use. In this case, 169. And then you have the amount of mechanics that you want to use in this case. So in this case, I have 1% in everything. That will be a certain number of mechanic units. And here's the total mechanics you're using. Here you input the test rig level you have. In this case, I have level zero. Let me put it in a different color just so that you can identify it. And you change this to one or zero depending on if you have an R&D car or not. In this case, I do not. I do not have a rig level. Over here, also going to put it on a different color so you identify it. Um, you put how much initial wear your cars have. In this case, since this is the beginning of the year, uh, the cars don't have an initial wear. So what do you do? You increase these values. In this case, uh, going to leave setup at 1%, going to leave development at 1%. You increase these values until this value, the bars value, reaches 7. Why 7? Because when you reach 7 bars, it's when you get 10, the full setup or the full development or the full research. It goes this way. I added this table so you can see how the game actually does things. It's weird, but it does it this way. This means testing is a bit less, uh, it consumes less resources. In any case, um, also I added this max percent in case you wanted to see how exactly, how much uh, exactly in terms of part you want. So if you reach 100%, you're going to have total, like, everything all of the bar so in this case i want to do everything so let's try to increase uh research by 10 percent you can see increase to 3.7 percent 52 percent i want it at seven percent or a hundred percent so it keeps us on to 22 percent 21 percent 22 percent and for safety i'm gonna put 23 percent i always put like 7.2 7.3 it's just safer okay so 23 percent in research 20% in engine, perhaps 30, 40, a bit less, 39, 38, 37. I'm gonna put 38, 38. Okay, tire 20, 30. Okay, that that should be fine. Yeah, put 30 and then fuel 20, 20, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 45, 40, 46. So we have a development program that. Fully kitted out the bars. Four seven, at least sevens on everything. I put 50% on driver one and two, and 10% on the test driver, then 20% on research engine tire and fuel testing. I could put I could take off some points, especially from development, because we have a full bunch of news development. In fact, that's actually too much. Anyway, gonna leave it that way because the 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 lead drivers actually like it. Anyway, um the only issue is that this program consumes 139% of our personnel and we have minus 39% remaining. That is not good. We have to use less than 100%. So what do you do? Reach the test miles. 179. Always use something that ends on 9. It's your best use of resources. 179. And then we go reducing on the amount of personnel you're using on every test. So 34 will, okay, 35, I'll put at 36, 28, 27. No, I do not know of a specific way to have the, the, the spreadsheet do this automatically. If you do, um, will be nice to know. Anyway, I'm gonna cut it here until I can get an actual program that will use 100% of our personnel. Right, so 229 uh, testing miles with 1% setup, 1% development, 16% research, 27% engine, 22% tire, and 33% fuel gives us something that has seven bars on everything, which means we will have <clears throat> full everything after this test. This uses exactly 100% of our personnel. 
However, it will leave our cars with some wear, and since we used all of our personnel for testing, we will not be able to repair the cars from the wear. So, yeah, that's exactly why I have this repair percent, which tells you how much you need to have remaining to be able to re repair the cars in their worst state. Uh, car health varies a bit. I use this 1500 value because it's the worst value I have. At times it is lower, at times it is much lower, but it's never higher than 15%. So you will always have some mechanics with some free time, but that's because um, that value changes a lot. And I decided to use a high value so that you could always repair the car. So in this particular case, you increase the testing miles even more until you're remaining matches or exceeds the repair percentage so let's go ahead and do that all right so i did get something we see that the remaining percentage is 28 percent and the repair percentage is 27 percent and that just required 309 miles research of 11 engine of 20 tire of 15 and fuel of 24 percent it's also a bit higher than seven, so we should absolutely get everything done. Of course, setup and development is 1% because we have our four main drivers doing the stuff. So yeah, um, so I'm gonna input this into Grand Prix World. You're gonna see this is going to work out. Right, so I have input the program, as you can see, one, one, 11, 20, 15, 24, and the drivers 50, 50, 50, 50, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, 20. We perform the testing, everything is full. Again, a recommendation, try to put it, if you want to go for the full thing, put like 7.2, 7.3, just to make sure this actually works because uh, the calculator is not perfect and at times it just ends up miscalculating things and ends up giving you a value lower than it should be. Let's just do development. This car is pretty good, much better than our Prost. And we have 28%, which we can use to simply and effortlessly repair the cars. And like I told you, we're going to have an extra remaining available, but that's because um, we run into a good condition of the cars. At times it can get worse, you get less, but you will always have a slight bit of personnel remaining that is not used. But honestly, that's perfectly fine uh, uh, for me because i prefer having personal the personnel that is in use over personnel over running our personnel if if uh, i want to put it that some way so that's what that's what i mean when i do testing i just put things in a spreadsheet and it outputs me a testing program that allows me to fill up everything of course in this case red bull i just wanted to showcase filling up every bar because it is unnecessary in this game in this particular moment a uh, tire is useless so there's that also test rig and R&D will affect things so make sure to input that in the spreadsheet now what else is here the design phase so the design did you know that we also have a sheet in the spreadsheet for that Yes, we do. Right over here in TU per car issue, we have a spreadsheet that shows you what do you need to do to fix certain stuff. So first thing you need to do over here in the current facility level, you put the facilities you have. In this case, we don't have any single facility. There's that, you zero it out. So we go to what we want to do. First design, I want to start developing the new car. So what do we do? We look at this. To get a single bar in the new car, we will need to put 70%. You can just outright put 70%. I already calculated already to put just 2%, an extra 2% for safety. But if you want to have an extra amount of points, you can just put how many points you want to have, and it will automatically calculate it for you here in the target. For now, I'm just going to have one until I... Look at the other stuff. Let's say I want to develop suspension. I want to have at least 52%. So let's say I want to develop three points or just two points of the new car. I will put 52% on the suspension and 32% on the new car. You can also develop the driver rate, but I, uh, I, I'm not too bothered about those. Driver rates just get developed as the season goes along. So they're not that important. 
So here we are. I start developing a new car because why not? 32 suspension. We're gonna improve the reliability. We up that to 52. And driver A, let's might as well start working on dual axis steering. Um, this is actually traction control, and I have it that way in the spreadsheet so that it works with pretty much everything. But there you go. I put the remaining there. And on this one, uh, might as well just like procedurally go through stuff like some power, nothing on the tires because partner. And here, give me some engine tolerance, and that should be good. Uh, hire the wind tunnel because why the hell no? And just build stuff because we have a whole bunch of money. This is a Red Bull safe. Of course, we have money. I'm not gonna build a wind tunnel though, that's unnecessary. <laughs> Do not do, do not build wind tunnels. That is just not necessary. Anyways, um, so yeah, I think we will be ready for the race. I could put stuff in licensing, but I don't much care about licensing, so we're gonna skip that. Um, so what are we doing? I'm putting people here in the pit stops. Um, I could have added something in the calculator to calculate how much pit stop percentage you needed, but every time I tried to do that, it just didn't work. So I'm just not gonna do it. Anyway, now, there is something we, a while ago, a long while ago, we activated telemetry. We're gonna use it. We're pretty much gonna use it because I activated it for a reason. So for that, first of all, I'm gonna give stop in the soft tires and I'm gonna give Paris the hard tires. I'm gonna be using the qualifying session as a kind of uh, practice session. So I need to test both tire sets. And what else do we need to do? We need to work on the setup. And would you realize that I have actually done something to help you out with your setups? Here is the setup point target, which is the path I am now on using when it comes to divvying up setup points. It mostly depends on me deploying points in tarmac and wind. So Australia has tarmac level five to start. I add one and put three points in wind. That will mean that I will need 10 setup points. Why? I use four setup points per driver here, and that means I have two free points to use. For Brazil, I put two points in tarmac and one point in wind. Remember, uh, well, not remember, but as I've seen, you do not want to have wind levels four, five, seven. Those just don't, those aren't good. So you want to avoid them by putting some wind points. In the case of Brazil, I put just two tarmac points and one wind point. That gives me four points to burn, which I can point into rain. And this, just you just follow this. Uh, you can see here in Germany, I will have 24 available, uh, 24 available points. That is not a typo. You can actually carry over a lot of points. Um, if you can figure out the way how, I will congratulate you. But anyway, um. Here's my recommended path. If you want to use it, it's fine. If not, you can you do your own thing. But in my particular case, I'm gonna put one point in tarmac, uh, three points in wind, and a point in dust for each driver. Like so. One tarmac, one dust, one wind, or both drivers. Confirm the setup, confirm the assembly, and the orders. First of all, just set this to zero. Don't, don't bother. For the orders, for this practice esk session that we're gonna have, where we're gonna use telemetry, excuse me, you set everything to five. Everything to five. Okay? You understand? Good. Confirm the orders, confirm everything else that you want to confirm. And we go on to the <laughs> practice session. Remember, for this you want to have dump 8Q, so you can see the telemetry on um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Telemetry on qualifying, so you can have the telemetry. Make sure the weather is dry, as you can see it isn't dry. So what we do is simply um, get out of there or wait until it actually dries out. So I'm just gonna get out of here. Um, not gonna have you waiting this much time. Along the way, uh, do make sure to use your research points. I actually reloaded this thing and I didn't use uh, I had it safe at the right points and I have to do this again, but make sure you use your research points unless you're trying to speed up and upgrade like I tend to do. Just just, just remember to use your research points. I tend to forget them more than I want to admit. Anyway, yeah, use your research points. 
much improved right conditions so again be stopping on the softs various on the hearts four laps of fuel this is important actually you can do it with three but i prefer to keep them four and send them out stopping set paris and since i also have only me dot that i can just remove the frame limiter and everything goes a bit faster and I can also make it go even faster by actually setting the thing at 150%. It was reading like 50% and not going as fast as it should have done, but now it's going really, really fast. And if I weren't recording, this will go even faster. But another way to make it faster is like not have the game rendering by opening up the driver order screen, as you can see. They're doing laps after they do their after they have three laps done. I can actually stop this little test that I have here. There we go. So after that, I can actually just hack out and go back to uh, the Grand Prix World directory, so we can see one important file that has been created, and it is that file that powers the most important part of my spreadsheet. So let's wait until the game restarts itself. And now we are back here. So what has changed? What has changed is this new file, the raceaid.txt. What is this file? This is the telemetry file. And this is the file that we will be using. Open it. This is the file that we will be using for the last part of the spreadsheet the one part that i haven't touched on yet so first things first we open it there's carlos Sainz in there but he's not relevant in this particular case anyway um there's a bunch of information here i have actually done a blog post about this information i also have to put it in the description because uh it says a whole bunch of relevant stuff but we're not gonna bother too much about that what we're gonna do is search for Bestappen, Max uh, M. Bestappen, there he is. Index 2, because he is uh, on the second team. The first team is Mercedes in this particular case. So we have Bestappen here. What do we want to focus? First of all, I need to tell you what are we looking for. And for that, we will go to probably the most important sheet in this whole spreadsheet. The setup calculator. Here it is. So what do we have here? Here we have... Spreadsheet, a sheet that calculates how much wear components will have depending on the driver orders the car has. What information do I need? Do you need to give to this thing? First of all, how long the race, uh, how long the race is, and the engine rigidity of well, the engine. In this case, the Honda has a five. Maybe you did pay attention and notice it was a five. That is a loud thunder, and yeah. So. You need to fit some more information to it, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. And for that reason, we did open the telemetry. First of all, we will check here on the preset star condition. You can see we have brakes, we have clutch, electronics, gears, hydraulics, suspension, throttle, which all of them are here. The only thing missing, you might be thinking it's uh, front wing, rear wing, and engine, but those are always 100. They always start at 100%. And the driver, where do we get the driver? You look here in driver condition. The value is always something like uh, 1050, 1150, 1250, 1350, something like that. But to get the proper value that you want to use, you need to check both of your drivers. You can see that the stabbing has a 1250. But if we go for Perez, Perez has an 1150. So that means he will wear out faster than the stabbing. So the starting condition here, you put it at 1150. So now, okay, we did this, now what? You can see laps completed zero and everything being at base value. If we go looking for Paris until we find him with one lap completed, you can see that his uh, car condition has changed. And again, this has to be done with orders five, otherwise nothing will work. So, after one lap, conditions have changed. So we input that, brakes 1581, Clutch 2183, gearbox 2185, uh, electronics shouldn't change unless you alter the orders mid-session. Hydraulic suspension, throttle, uh, driver, and so on and so forth. Let me just set this 
so you can have an example, a proper example. Yeah, so driver condition here and everything else as you can see here. Okay, what do we do now? Go full screen and go all the way to the right, see if you see anything red. If you don't see nothing red, that means you're safe. No component should fail unless you have some sort of random issue. But that means you probably could push the engine a bit more, uh, the car a bit more without any sort of failure. And you have the order where, uh, in which you should do things. Uh, this is incorrect, by the way. It should be off racing line first. But what do you want to do with off racing line? You want to maximize it. You set it at 10. Always set it at 10. You can see we set it at 10 and suspension is failing. Now, what do we do? If the suspension fails with off racing line at 10, you lower curb usage. Let's put it at 4. Still fails. Put it at 3. Still fails. Put it at 2. Now it's fine. Perfect. Next thing you need to do is top speed. The proper way to set top speed is look at the engine rigidity and put one more point in that. So if you had level 5 rigidity, you can use 6 top speed. You can see the rear wing, it will survive. Every other component does survive. If I were to put top speed 7, as you can see, the rear wing breaks halfway through the race. You don't want to do that. So set it at 6, leave it be. Acceleration and braking, you can set it as high as possible without breaking the car. In this case, I can, I can set it pretty high. Nothing will break. So in theory, I could run with 10 acceleration and 10 braking, and everything will be fine, right? Right? No, because the tires hate using high acceleration and high braking. You don't want to do that. So what exactly do you do to know how much the tires will wear? As you remember, Paris is running the hard tires. You can know that because in his first completed lap, his total tire degradation immediately went up to 0 0.6. Immediate telltale that he has the hard tires. How do we know how much they were? We go for his second completed lap, in this case, 0 0.60, 70. You go here on the fresh performance block, I call this a block, and input that specific value, 0.67. And it will give you a bit of information. You have the exact wear that the, la that the, uh, the car suffered per lap, how much until the tire drops off, and how much until it fails. I will explain what that means in a moment, but we also need information for the softs. And we did have the Stappen going around on the softs. So for him, instead of going on lap two, where is 0.3, much lower than the heart, we go to lap complete 3, where we will get that his total tire degradation is 0.33. You input that, and it will update stuff. What exactly did it update? It updated, let me put this at, at, at 5. It updated this particular chart, which shows you how much tire degradation each tire has. So, the soft tire starts at 0, then goes to 0 0.3. Then degrades much, much faster than the hard, which starts at 0 0.6 and then starts degrading. The thing is, the soft tire can only make it to 1.3. So at that point, it will fail. Like in lap 24, tire fails. Uh, lap 25, tire fails. The hard tire can make it to 1.6 and... Yeah, it doesn't quite make it there. So the hard tire could survive the race if you, for some reason, wanted to do a zero stop. I do not recommend. So you want to know how much you can save the tires? Well, if you were to go full management, this is the values that we have. If you want to go full push, you have these values. But I prefer to use the custom values here. So what do you do? You set the acceleration that you want. Say you want to use one acceleration. And say you want to use three braking. You alter that and the graph will change. In this case, the hard tire will drop off after 43 laps. What does drop off mean? You see how this chart, uh, this, this graph angles a bit at a certain point? Like, in the hard it's a bit less noticeable, but it is there. On the soft, it's pretty noticeable. That is the drop off point. The point where the angle increases, it's what I call the drop off point. At that point, the tire starts wearing out much faster. And the failure point is the, well, the amount of laps in which the soft will fail.
self-explanatory. Like the moment it reaches 1.3, lap 35, that tire is dead. So you want to do less than 35 laps when, uh, well, when you have braking at field. If you want it at one, as you can see, everything flattens out a bit more because the tires last a bit longer. In this case, the soft will fail after 40 laps, while the hard will fail after 146 laps. It will drop off after 50. You legit could do like a zero stop on this thing and the pace wouldn't fall off that much. Of course, the obvious problem is that uh, you will have issues with your fuel, but I mean, there's that option. The options are there and giving them to you. So, so that's a way I design my strategy. You want to see the other way I design my strategy? The track factors pages. This is the per lap page, which determines like how much fuel per lap and where per lap affects your car. Uh, this is compared to each other. So 50 is average, uh, 80 uh, well, higher values is more effect, lower values is less effect. So Australia is fairly average in terms of fuel delta and the world delta is a bit lower. I have made some formulas here that try to calculate a strategy, but they are imperfect because in Australia you actually want a one stop. What about Brazil? The fuel delta is normal, but the wear that you suffer is significant. So you want to be careful with the tires. That's why this recommends a three stop in terms of tires. In terms of fuel, it recommends a two. Argentina, you can go one stop or two stop here. It's fine because fuel delta is not significant. Well, let's go to one of the more extreme tracks, Spain. Fuel delta, significant. It's 74, it's pretty high. So it recommends that you go three stop on the fuel and two stop on the tires. The overall strategy is three stop. I actually do recommend the three stop or the two stop in Spain. What about Monaco? Minimal fuel delta. So you can put a whole bunch of fuel. It's barely noticeable. The word delta is significant, so you need to be careful with the tires. So in terms of fuel, recommends the one stop. I also endorse the one stop in this track. Germany. Germany is one of those tracks that kind of breaks because, as we know, the zero stop is pretty good. The one stop is pretty good here. Mostly because the wear delta is not significant. You can have worn tires and it barely does anything. Same with Belgium. Barely does anything if you have worn tires. The only reason why the zero stop works in Germany and not Belgium is because of the fuel delta, which is higher on Belgium. So there is that. Another way you can analyze things is on a per lap basis, uh, on a per race basis, and that's exactly what I have here. Um, pretty much the exact same thing. Remember these values compared to each other. So for example, Australia is pretty average, maybe a bit on the high side. Spain, still very high. Monaco, still pretty low. Germany, fairly low. Belgium, average. Again, the reason why the, the zero stop doesn't work in Belgium. And you have the hard and soft wear rate. Do not compare the hard and soft rate to each other. Compare them to other tracks. So for example, you determine that say the three stop works pretty well on Argentina because the tire wear is significant enough for it to work. But you say, will the three stop work as well in Spain? Then you go to compare like tires wear out less. Oh, but the fuel is significantly higher. Okay, the three stop will probably work because of the fuel penalty. Or at Monaco, okay, the, the, the wear is significantly, it's a bit higher than Argentina, but the fuel is very much lower. Maybe I shouldn't run the three stop because the fuel penalty is lower. That's the kind of thing that this thing helps you determine. And well, that's pretty much all of the important things in the Grand Prix World Manager spreadsheet. What else do I have to show you in this spreadsheet? Some things to the left here, mostly stuff that I have published on the blog, which is uh, how much the setup points affect the car, uh, how much certain components affect the car, how much uh, the driver orders or uh, um, engine stuff, uh, tires stats, fuel stats, engine stats affect the car. This is what I can show you here. Along the way, that was wrong. Acceleration does affect tire wear. Anyway, yeah, I think I have covered everything I did from how to open telemetry uh, and, well, to see telemetry and what my personal spreadsheet was all about which is this one i will put a link in the description 
to a Google Drive's document on where to find this particular spreadsheet. I have to block some of the um, cells so that you don't accidentally alter something. I will only leave editable uh, the cells that you definitely need to stay still. Like, for example, you don't need to edit, uh, say, these things right here or these formulas right here because then stuff will break. You don't need to edit this either. Let me like remind myself that this is not editable. But yeah, the orange stuff, the yellow stuff, that's stuff you actually can and should edit. But everything else, if you accidentally edit, it might break the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to lock it so that accidents don't happen. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial video. Comment if you have any questions. I will helpfully answer them. And, well, see you on the next Grand Prix World video.